Hello and welcome to this video on animals in research, specifically on one animal that you will find in every project, the arsehole malcontent lab animal who seems to deliberately confound your findings. An old article that premised this video is a rather satirical take on animal research, but inadvertently strikes a sore point. Nearly all animal studies are well designed. In fact, it is a requirement with most ethics boards to demonstrate that the three R's have been followed, and one of the stipulations is to refine the experiment and reduce the number of animals required. Assuming the researchers has done their due diligence, the number of animals has been minimised. The small number carries certain strengths that can become problems. The first is the colony size. Small colonies may not work well with mice and rats. Conversely, overly large colonies are a problem, but this is less common. Having a small colony means that unexpected problems affect the entire experiment or that group of animals. Being individuals, it will affect each differently. It also means that there will not be a consistent change. A sample size should account for this, something known as statistical power. Statistical power is supposed to calculate the necessary number of animals to observe a result or pattern at a set confidence level in the related degree to which you can infer the results. For example, 10 mice may not be enough to apply findings to the world population or even a broad indication. A larger cohort of 30 or more animals allows you to begin inferring irrelevance. Just enough animals to do this with statistical confidence but not so many as to be cruel and unnecessary, or any more than is absolutely needed. This is where those weaknesses come in, because it means that any outlier is obvious in experiments with lower confidence thresholds. Look at this graph and you may not see the outliers, and you consider the size that makes sense. If you use appropriate methods, outliers can be removed in this sort of scenario. If you have a small sample size, then removing an outlier may not be an option, and something like that in this graph is considerably more obvious and considerably more problematic. Nearly every study has at least one metric with an outlier. As with the article that gave rise to this video, this will inevitably be traced back to the one animal that has been an arsehole the entire time. It might be inconsistent gene expression between PCR plates, odd protein expression quantities, or a cursed animal that will not die or dies too early and throws off the numbers. It is these outliers and anomalies that make analysing data difficult. In animal research it is even more difficult than a single subject can ruin your data. The humorous article that gave rise to this video is linked in the description box below. Thank you for watching this video. If it has been of interest, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.